Welcome, welcome everybody to the final stance in our Steve stance guide. Other than the Lionheart 2.0 video I have coming up, is the Flicker stance, aka the Philly shell, right here. It was developed for the sake of counter punching. This is a stance that was created to use the rear hand as a load up. We would drop our jab hand from our face to our body, move it back and forth, allowing us to extend it out at any time unpredictably. So we would use the jab hand and we would sort of do a snap punch with it. So your arm is kind of used as a whip or a flicker as it takes flick like jabs at the opponent very fast we get 12 frame jabs at this then you would load up the backhand for whenever your opponent decided to approach and you would smack them with a strong loaded up counter punch that would knock them out as for practitioners of this we have two very prominent ones we have thomas the hitman hearns thomas the hitman hearn was known for having a very strong flicker jab that he would use to hold in place and he would use the rear hand to strike. So he would flick at you and do something called the lazy jab where he would do a flicker jab but he would have the punch retrieve back as slow as possible. He would obfuscate your vision so that the strong right cross was right around the corner. He took many a championship and title with this move. Another prominent practitioner we have is one you know and may hate or love depending on your view or perspective but nonetheless floyd the money mayweather jr is an infamous practitioner of the flicker stance he would use flicker stance to dance around his opponent defend himself against his opponent's strong offense by using a reverse step along with the philadelphia shell and make it his own technique where he was able to win his matches very very efficiently uh one of the weaknesses of this stance in boxing and the way it translates to steve is that when you are in philly shell stance it limits your offense as your hand that you're using to load up is unable to participate in combination blows in an effective way where you can go back and forth in a rhythm kind of like one two three it is unable to do one two three because the backhand is loaded waiting for Smash. a counter hit like i said this is a counter punching stance this stance has a utility okay steve can use flicker jabs and cancel them at a variety of places his flicker one series has both a high and a mid extension respectively. So he does a lot of the combos with one hand. So we have high, 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 all done with one. And then even the mid and the extender high that he does with flicker one down one is all done with one hand while the right hand is steady guarding Steve's face. But what he does have is the strong counter punch in flicker back two. We'll get into that a bit later. How do we get into flicker stance? There's a variety of ways that Steve can get into flicker stance. We have back one. Back one will be a flicker transition that you use very, very frequently. Flicker stance, like the flavor test says, can be shifted into ducking stance, left weave, right weave, or sway. So your three, your four button, and your back three and back four and forward three and forward four are all accessible from flicker stance transition from flicker to duck this is a stance cancel that you will need to master as a steve player going from flicker to ducking i have an advanced steve guide coming out where we'll be talking about transitions between stances a lot more often we have one down one one to one back so all the flicker transitions are done by holding the back button as you do the move that will transition. So when you hold back, it'll transition you to the stance. So back one, back. 
is how you enter Flicker. The purpose of Flicker Stance with Steve is to make a lot of his moves safer. So you'll find that a lot of his moves that have Flicker Stance extensions will make his strings more safe than they're supposed to be or than they would be had he not done it. For instance, we'll use back one as an example. If I just do back one raw, with no flicker transition, it is minus 14. So yeah, if we set it there and I just do back one, that says punish. So I get punished by King's down forward one right here. But if I just canceled it with back, if you look at the frame data, we'll get a zoom in on that. It says minus one. So it shaves a total of 13 frames off of the recovery when we cancel in the flicker. That is so significant that we cannot ignore it. And the benefit of flicker stance is that it has an auto block feature. All flicker stance transitions have an auto block of mid and high attacks. So any mid or high attack, Flicker will auto guard it despite if you are holding the back button. For instance, I'm doing back one and I'm holding back so that it transitions into Flicker stance. However, I let go, as you can see right here, I'm holding back after I hold Flicker. You can see in the direction, I'm gonna zoom in on it. But right here, I don't hold back. I let King hit me and it still goes through. One to one is a transition you'll be using a lot. Without transition, is minus three. One to one with transition is minus one. We got one down one, a high mid string. Very good for clutching out games when your opponent is expecting a high series or they're not expecting a mid. So one down one is a very strong transition. It gets you in the flicker stance very fast and it is neutral on block. So you can set a bulldog or a masher up for a counter punch here. So if you know your opponent is about to mash a button, you notice that down one will hit them. So if the opponent is just mashing whatever, that one down one is very good. One down one and one one down one are very good series for catching mashers. Remember and ponder this well. It's plus 11 on counter hit. So if you catch an opponent that matches after this string, after one down one, they will get hit with 11 frames counter hit. So we get an uninterrupted flicker one or a grab attempt, which is 12 frames. We'll get into the grab a little bit later. Rocket launcher. Let's go over all the neutral stance ones. Rocket launcher without flicker stance transition is punishable at minus 10. Rocket launcher, boom, punish, right? Rocket launcher with flicker stance transition is minus three. It shaves seven frames off. So the amount of frames that it will shave off of each move is unique to the individual move. However, the general rule of thumb is that it will make it safe, period. The rocket launcher, a 16 frame heat engager already, is made safe. Quarter circle forward one back. Very good transition and one that you'd be using quite a bit at the wall and in neutral. Peekaboo has a flicker stance transition as well. If you just came over from our peekaboo video or you're watching this in one long series, which I hope you are by the way, and you should, you'll remember that I said peekaboo back 1121 is one of the only ways to go from peekaboo stance to flicker stance. So we'll be bringing that back as well. It is a mid, high, mid, mid string that when hit at any part of the second, third, or fourth string on counter hit will wall splat. And it is a safe string because it goes into flicker stance. It is very tricky to duck the second string. You have to be very fast. It puts us at minus three. So our turn isn't even completely over. We can still, at minus three, do a sway and, and prevent a counter hit attempt. Do a sway left or a sway right. We can duck. All at minus three, that's peekaboo back one, one, two, one. If we don't transition, it's minus 10 and punishable, just like rocket launcher. We have two, one back. If we don't transition, we'll be minus five 
but if we do the flicker stance transition, we'll be plus three on block. Very useful. Plus the range on it is insane. 2.3, this is hitting. Regular one jab is not hitting from 2.3, but two jab is. So two jab is definitely longer range than one jab. I'm sure that's visually obvious. So definitely use them interchangeably. 421 back. That's something I forgot to go over in my peekaboo video. 421 forward is a way to get into peekaboo at neutral stance. It's a mid high string that goes into peekaboo and into flicker. 421 forward is for peekaboo and goes in neutral on block. 421 back is plus one on block. It is very delayable. It's very delayable and it has a mix up with Lionheart. Now that Lionheart is cancelable, uh, you can mix it up with a double mid or a mid high. Granted, if you cancel the forward 2 2, you are minus 10. But if you go into Lionheart stance, you're minus 6, but you also cannot block in the stance. Keep this in mind. That's pretty good. Left weave forward 1 1 1 B. If you don't do the transition, it's plus three as it ends in a high. It's a mid-mid-high string, so beware of it in high-level play. It is duckable if the opponent sees it or is familiar with the matchup. I've seen a lot of Steve's get cracked with this, including myself. Uh, if you do do the transition, it ends in plus four. Very good phrase for us. Oh, yes. Yeah, so down forward, one, two, one. I actually forgot about that one. This is probably the one you're going to be using the most, is this is the one you use for your combos. It's neutral on block. It's a mid-high string that does a fake-out hook. Down forward 1-2, and then to mix that up, he has down forward 1-2-1 one, one to mix up the timing. This is a counter hit launcher, and it is also neutral on block. All right, and that's all the ways to get into the stance. We're gonna run them all in slow motion. Drop a like and subscribe if you enjoy what you're seeing. I appreciate you for watching. Your viewership is good enough for me, but I want to keep providing that value for you. So drop a like and sub. Percentage will be much higher that I'll be able to provide more service for you, just like I did for you now in the future. Hitting that subscribe button could be really beneficial for you in developing your skills. But I'll definitely be providing that speed value for sure. So drop a like and follow for me. I really appreciate it.